Gonzalez, Chair, calling uh, together the Planning Board meeting for Tuesday, November 1st, 6 p.m. Um, roll call, James Sweeney? Here. Larry Hassan? Here. And then you just have me, the Chair. We are down one board member, so um, a lot of items have been moved or continued until we get another member of the board. And it's my understanding that what's on the agenda has to be either unanimous or two out of three. Is that correct, Rob? Uh, yes, ma'am, that is correct. Okay. Site plan reviews need to be unanimous. Um, subdivisions, just two out of three. All right, I'm just gonna quickly read the opening statement. This meeting is being recorded in, a, in accordance with the government order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law General Law Chapter 38, Section 20. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the Planning Board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record. For those of you joining by phone, press star nine. If you wanna ask a question, please raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's web pages. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure account accuracy. So quickly to review the agenda, um, after we do a lot release, if anyone here is for 1449 Main Street, return to ZBA, that's been continued. Also 48 North Pearl Street, return to ZBA has been continued. 124 Bradley Ave, return to ZBA continued. And we have a preliminary subdivision, 262 Winter Street, 34 Kent Street has also been continued. So if you're here for any of those four, you can stay on or drop off, it's your call. Okay. Madam Chair? Yes? Um, I just wanna state that I am out of town and with the holidays going on, it will probably be Monday or Tuesday before this meeting is posted on the city's webpage. We usually have them up within 48 hours, but, but that is not gonna happen this week. I apologize for that. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Um, okay, did you did the board members get a chance to read the minutes from the last meeting? Yes. Yep. A motion to accept the minutes? Motion to accept minutes. Second. Okay. Roll call, James? Yes. Larry? Yes. Tony? Yes. Okay. No a and is correct, Evan? Nope, none. Just one lot release you want to review? Yeah, that's it. It's just uh, 432 Crescent Street. You got the surety today. Uh, it's good to go. Okay. Is there a motion? Motion to release 432 Second. Crescent Street. Second. Okay, roll call, James? Yes. Larry? Yes. Tony? Yes. Oh, and, and thank you, um, James, for actually addressing the street. So when we're making a motion on any of these applicants, please uh, cite what it's for and what the uh, street name address is, please. Um, okay, I don't think there's anything else we can get right into the agenda, correct, Evan? Yep, sure can. Uh, okay. So first up is a site plan approval for 148 North Montello, Representative J.K. Holmgren. Applicant is Woodward's Auto Spring Shop, Inc. Yeah, we have uh, board members here. Oh, there's Scott, I'm sorry. Just a little slower than you are, Rob. Scott Faria, J.K. Holmgren, uh, representing Woodward Autos uh, for a site plan at 148 North Montello Street. Uh, Woodward has been uh, in business since the 1920s. In uh, their at their current location of North Montello Street and Charles Street, they are looking to build a freestanding 9,600 square foot building on their property. Uh, we went through the technical review process way back in July. Uh, <laughs> we have made all the changes, 
submitted everything to you folks. Uh, really, the, the tech review changes were all pretty minor. The one thing that came up during tech review, there was a water main that at one point ran from Chow Street uh, across our property to an old school. I believe it might have been uh, the Washington School, but I'm not 100% sure. But an old school that was uh, on an abutting property that's obviously no longer there. Uh, folks at the DPW are pretty sure that water service has been removed going back 30 or 40 years ago. There's a chance that it is still in the ground just because they don't have any uh, any plans or notes that says it was removed. Uh, so we were asked to provide an easement along the side of our property just in case that water main is still in place. Uh, so we've done that. And that's kind of been the hold up for the last couple of months in coming before you folks. Uh, the planning department wanted us to have that plan recorded and it's... Uh, for a whole bunch of reasons, it's been kind of painful getting it recorded, but we finally did. So we've taken care of that issue. Uh, really, the only other issues were uh, just a separate grease and oil separator uh, for the sewer line leaving the building. Since there will be overhead doors uh, with the chance of vehicles being parked inside the uh, the building, we need to have a, a grease and oil separator that ties into the municipal sewer line. So we added that. That was one comment that came up. Uh, at tech review. Uh, besides that, Madam Chair, I think it's a, a pretty straightforward plan. Property is zoned uh, industrial, so it's a uh, it's an allowed use in this zone. Okay, we'll open it up to questions to the board. Madam Chair, if I could, uh, <clears throat> would you can you run us through the plan? Yeah. Do you have it? Do you have it? Can you bring it up? Well, maybe Evan can do it. <laughs> Give me a chance. Give me a chance. Uh, this is not it. Tell me you're seeing that. There you go. We are seeing it. Yes. All right. Good. Seeing. I'm at least surprising Isaiah anyways. Nobody else but Isaiah. So... <laughs> So here's the plan, folks. Uh, North Montello Street, Child Street, their existing building, uh, 148 North Montello Street, the land behind that building coming in off of Child Street. We're putting the building pretty much where uh, their side yard is. It's an existing grass area right off of the existing edge of pavement. So we're adding this 60 by 160 building uh, right here on the on the westerly side of the property. The entrance uh, will remain off of Child Street like it is now. Uh, plenty of parking in front of this uh, new warehouse building, uh, and there'll still be uh, adequate travel widths between our new parking spaces and the existing building. Uh, so circulation uh, from North Montello Street to Child's or from Child's all to North Montello Street is not a problem uh, as a result of this building. And we also do have a subsurface drainage area uh, proposed that'll handle all the uh, roof runoff proposed development. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Board members, questions? And I'm sorry, I forgot to um, announce we have Deputy Chief Ed Williams with us as well. Do you have any questions? No, ma'am, we're all set. We went through the site plan review process. And we're good with it. Okay, good. Thank all you. right. And thanks for getting that easement plan over, Scott. Yep. Madam, Madam Chair, if I could, is, is there a street level view of what, you know, from Charles Street, what, what it'll, it will look like just by chance? Do you have that? I mean, I do not have it. Uh, okay. Mr. Sweeney, I don't, it'll, I mean, it, it's going to be your, uh, it, it's pretty much going to match the existing building. It'll be concrete block like the existing building. Okay. Okay. All right. Is this open to public comment? And if yes, do we have anyone? Uh, yes, it is. I'm sorry. And um, is there anyone with their hand raised? To... I do not have anybody with their hand raised. 
Okay, then we'll close, <clears throat> close public comment. Is there a motion? Motion to approve uh, with the following conditions. The city engineer must review and approve the site plan revisions before permits are granted. Second. And for just uh, the street address that you're approving? I'm sorry. Um, 148 North Montello Street, site plan approval, Wooded Auto Springs. Okay, and I heard a second. So roll call, James? Yes. Larry? Yes. Myself? Yes. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Scott. Thank you very much, folks. Thanks, Scott. I'll see you in a few minutes. All right, next up. We have site plan approval, the Westgate Mall, Bank of America. The applicant is new Westgate Mall LLC. And we have RJ O'Connell Associates Inc. representing. And everyone who's part of this presentation, raise your hand, please, so we can move you over to a panelist. Thank you. Tim Sullivan and Brian. I thought I'd move John to it. Excuse me. There he goes. Good evening, Evan. Can can you hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Um, I, I think uh, my colleague uh, Tim Sullivan is going to do an introduction, and then I will uh, share with you a small, quick PowerPoint presentation to uh, explain the project. Thanks, Brian. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Thanks for having us. Tim Sullivan of Goulston and Stores uh, here on behalf of New England Development, the owner of uh, the Westgate Mall. Uh, Brian is with RJ O'Connell and Associates, and we're here tonight regarding the site plan review uh, for the construction of a 4,600 square foot Bank of America branch at the Westgate Mall. Um, as many of you know, I'm sure there have been various improvements to the property in recent years. Uh, this is another opportunity to continue that trend at the mall. Uh, this project is a construction of a new building. Uh, it's in the parking lot where there's currently a Bank of America ATM kiosk near the uh, IHOP that will go away. The, the, the kiosk will go away, IHOP stays. Um, by way of background, we filed this application, went through the technical review process. Uh, we received a very helpful feedback, some related to circulation and, and stormwater and signage, all of which was incorporated. Uh, we had another meeting uh, and um, the tech review process approved that. So the plans before you tonight have been vetted by city staff, incorporate those comments um, and are reflective of those. So with that, um, I think Brian can can walk you through the plan we have uh, and we're both available for any questions. Thank you. Who's gonna pull up the plan? Okay, here we go. Can, can the board see that? Yes. yes. Great. So uh, thank you, uh, Tim and Madam Chair. Uh, for the record, my name is Brian Dundon. I am a site civil engineer with RJ O'Connell and Associates. I'm actually the entity that prepared the, uh, the site plan review package that Tim alluded to that went through tech review. Uh, so quickly with us, oh, must understand. Oh. So quickly before us tonight, um, as mentioned, Tim did an introduction. I am here. We also have uh, Mr. Tuick, uh, who represents New Westgate Mall LLC with us tonight, should there be any questions regarding uh, the mall that Mr. Tuick could answer. Uh, as Tim alluded to, uh, we are proposing a 4,600 square foot uh, freestanding structure on the southwesterly part portion of, of the Westgate Mall property. Uh, I'm sure the, ball, the, the board is familiar with Westgate Mall. Uh, it is a 48 acre site. And at the southwesterly end where you see the small green little area with the cloud is the general locust area where the, where the Bank of America project is proposed, which has direct frontage uh, along Westgate Mall Drive. To, to the north of the bill of the Westgate Mall, excuse me, to the north, of the Bank of America building is the existing IHOP restaurant. To the south is uh, Starbucks. 
As you will notice that in the area where we're planning this, this, this freestanding structure, there are two existing uh, mall and uh, curb cuts into the mall. The, the plan is to remain uh, is to maintain those curb cuts. They will not they will not be altered. Uh, at the conclusion of the uh, construction and redevelopment of this project, uh, will result in a net increase of about 3,500 square feet of additional landscaped area uh, on the mall proper. And, and as a result of that, there will be a reduction in paved surface area. The redevelopment and the, and the inclusion of the Bank of America building also allows us to enhance and improve uh, traffic circulation within the vicinity of, of the developed area. And this will come in the form of um, island end caps at the ends of the parking rows, as you see here with the dark green trees shown around the perimeter edges. Um, we have also defined the main traffic aisles with traffic control striping and signage, uh, stop signs and, sh and, slime and lane striping will be added as, as, uh, as shown. Uh, we have also provided provisions for ADA accessible parking spaces to be located at the front entry area, which is in this general location in here. Uh, it should be noted that as part of the Bank of America operation, there will be two drive up ATM kiosk buildings located along the side of the Bank of America that fronts along Westgate Drive. You see uh, two vehicles parked in the, in the kiosk uh, locations with a third being the bypass lane. So in the event that uh, the queue tends to back up a little bit, uh, customers will have the, the ability to bypass, freely bypass the, the drive-through queue lane to enter the building at the front area. We are also, again, to promote and enhance traffic circulation. Uh, you are seeing at various points within the development program, uh, wayfinding signage to direct customers either to the ATM uh, drive through kiosk area or to the front or to the front entry area. It should be noted that uh, this wayfinding signage was worked out and recommended at our uh, tech design tech, technical design review meeting. In addition to the landscape enhancements being shown, um, the existing utility infrastructure that is sewer, water, gas, electric, and telephone are all readily available uh, to this area of the, of the mall, and they all have sufficient capacity to accommodate the, this project. Um, it should be noted as part of our stormwater system, uh, the roof area of the Bank of America building has been designed such that it will be collected and, and routed to a subsurface uh, drainage basin that will store that water and infiltrate it back into the ground. That'll be located underneath the parking lot area in this general area. So in short, those are the major um, site planned improvements uh, to accommodate uh, the Bank of America building. I do have uh, to show you, again, his, again a summary of where we are. Uh, here's a rendering of what the Bank of America, I have a, a bigger version of this plan to show you uh, next. but. Uh, to, just to summarize, it's it's you know a freestanding building to be operated by Bank of America. We have upgraded, improved some traffic circulation, increased the amount of landscaped area, uh, and the existing infrastructure is has sufficient capacity to to accommodate our project. Uh, it should just be noted that uh, we are located within the general commercial zoning district and also the uh, C C6 Regional Shopping Center District and the bank slash lending institution type use is an allowed use subject to uh, site plan review. Uh, as my colleague Tim alluded to, we were before the tech review committee at its last hearing in, in September, and they have confirmed that that their comments that they previously raised raised or have been adequately addressed and are reflected on the plans that were submitted for this application. Uh, again, here's a rough rough location of the utility plan. As you'll see in this area and here, this is the location of the subsurface drainage basin that'll collect runoff from the roof, store it in this basin, and allow it to uh, infiltrate into the subsurface uh, soils. Uh, from a 
rendering standpoint, is a blow up, as I mentioned before, uh, taken at, at, at along the front and the side of the building where the two ATM kiosks are planned. So in short, though, that's the project uh, before you that we're seeking approval on. And our team is more than happy to uh, address and answer any questions that you may have. I think I can stop sharing now if you'd like. Um, actually, can you go back to the previous plan? Uh, one more. This one? The you one where it shows the parking and the greenage, the new greenage. There you go. Yeah. Um, so, I, and I actually, I'm glad to, to see this plan in front of us. I do banking over on Belmont Street and it's a, it's a nightmare over there because you need another, you need another branch over here badly. But my question for you is um, along the entrance to the mall between IHOP and those parking spaces, are there going to be parking curbs so that cars can't cut through that little area? Because that is a busy entrance. There, if I, if you can see my. Uh, yes, yeah, I see that okay. line. Th th there'll be curved islands here and here and along here, here, and here. Then there's a longitudinal curved island, landscaped island here. Okay. The, this parking, again, one of the comments that came out was that that we heard at Tech Review is IHOP on the weekends tends to get a little busy. So we've provided some parking for them uh, on in this area. And here we feel that they'll use those, these, these spaces uh, during the weekends or during the busy times uh, to, to access the, uh, the restaurant. Okay, good. So the entrance for the Bank of America is on the other end of the That building. is correct. Yes, oh. it is. That that's that is a good plan. All right, thank you. Any questions from the board? Madam Chair, it's Larry. Um, no question. I just wanted to bring up that I because I was at the tech meeting. Um, there was no need for a dumpster because all the rubbish is taken off site every night. That was what I remember. Right, because a lot of people during some of the meetings ask about where's your dumpster location. I just wanted to clarify that. That's all. Yes, that it uh, that is correct. So, so what happens is is that what I consider white paper, you know, business transaction paper between the bank and customers, that type of paper waste is segregated separately and stored on site and a paper, a outside contractor uh, comes to the site and, and shreds that information as it does have se sensitive account information on it. Um, it does not leave the site. It is, it is uh, taken to a, a mobile shredder. Mobile shredder shreds it on site and then leaves. Um, general waste, you know, lunch bags, uh, general waste that is not shredded is taken by hand, it's it's bagged internal to the building and every night when the bank is cleaned, uh, the cleaning company uh, takes it and disposes of it at, at its place of operation. Okay, so thank again, you. No I need wanted to clarify that, but thank you very much. That's all I had for questions, Madam Chair. Thank you, Larry. James? I don't think I have any uh, additional questions that weren't already uh, raised and answered. Okay. Is this open to the public? Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you're attending this meeting and would like to make a comment, um, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the screen to signify that you would like to talk or press star nine if you are on a telephone. And Madam Chair, I do not see anyone with their hand up at the moment. Okay. Is there a motion? Motion to approve with standard conditions for Westgate Drive, New Westgate Mall, LLC, Bank of America. Second. All right. Roll call, James? Yes. Larry? Yes. Tony? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next, uh, we have Definitive Subdivision, Petronelli Way, Brockton Re Redevelopment Authority. The applicant is New Vision Enterprises, and J.K. Holmgren is representing. Thank you again, Madam Chair, board members, uh, Scott Farrier, J.K. Holmgren Engineering. 
representing New Vision Enterprises uh, on this definitive subdivision. Uh, I'll try again. Here we go. So what we have, uh, folks, is a subdivision of property that's currently owned uh, by the city of Brockton through the Redevelopment Authority. Uh, it's basically uh, land that's currently a parking lot between Petronelli Way and Franklin Street and then between Franklin Street and Court Street. And uh, my client, Joe Gonzalez from New Vision, is uh, hoping to construct a building on Lot A and as part of his uh, agreement with the city, he was to do this definitive subdivision plan where the city is looking to redivide the property and the, the main reason behind it was to propose two new roadways, uh, one that will connect between Petronelli and Franklin Street in the north-south direction, and then a second one that'll go between Franklin and Court Street, again, in the north-south direction. So that's what this plan uh, proposes to do is divide the property, create lot A, uh, which New Vision will uh, hopefully be coming before you folks with a site plan on relatively soon, and then to lay out the future roadways for lot B and lot E uh, as worked worked on with the, uh, the planning department, Madam Chair. Thank you, Scott. Uh, board members, questions? I, I don't have any questions. I just have a comment that I think um, I think New Visions Enterprises has done a pretty good job so far in the city. So I have confidence that um, they'll they'll continue to do that for our city in that, in that specific area. Yeah, I, I would second that, uh, Larry. I actually took a tour of uh, of a different project that they did, and uh, I too have confidence in, in what they're doing. So because you know I could see it firsthand. So. Um, other than that, I, I'm good for questions. All right, thank you. It's open for public comment, Rob. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions or comments, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen. You move your cursor over towards the bottom. The uh, uh, menu should become available for you to use. And Madam Chair, I do not see any hands up at this time. All right, thank you, Rob. Is there a motion? Motion to approve Petronelli Way Property Brockton Redevelopment Authority applicant new visions and proposals. Second. All right, roll call, James. Yes. Larry. Yes. And a yes from me. All right, thank you, Scott. Thank you, folks. Happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you soon. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. So I think that concludes our meeting, unless there's other business. Okay, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Roll call, James. Yes. Larry. Yes. That's a yes. All right. Good night, everyone, and enjoy your holidays with your Thanks, family. Thanks, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Kevin, Isaiah, and Rob. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy holidays. Bye-bye. Happy holidays to you, too, Larry. Thank and you. everybody else. I guess.